So, entonces, buenos días. Soy Karl Büttner de la empresa Endos in Hauser en Suiza. Y mi, mi español no es suficiente por esta presentación. Entonces voy a cambiar a inglés y si tienes algunas preguntas, um, lo hacemos uh, luego después de la presentación. So, who am I? My name is Karl Büttner. I'm 27 years old. At Entros and Hauser, I am the technology marketing manager for Profibus. This means in Entros and Hauser, I try to align our Profibus activities. I am also active in the Profibus uh, international organization. There I have a co-chair of the PA marketing, as we call it. And moreover, I support our local sales centers and local regional Profibus associations worldwide regarding Profibus technology marketing. So what is the goal of our webinar today? As you see, I want to give you a brief introduction in what Profibus uh, profiles are, how those profiles work, and um, how the integration is done in the PLC, just a small overview. And I think the, the main, the biggest part, as mentioned in the heading, is the um, PA profile benefits. So let's start right away. Going from analog to digital, I think is from everyone, everyone knows this from his personal life. So we use smartphones, we use uh, computers, everything is digital. Our, our children um, have this like natively and accept this, but in the process industry, we are a bit on another, on another track. So it's a bit more, let's say, a slow industry, conservative industry, where the life cycles of a plant are up to 40 years. So in the last, well, in the last 20 years, we have started to change to digital there as well. And this is what our, what the pictures on the bottom say. So this is an old um, liquid fund from 1983 analog device, 4 to 20 milliamps. And nowadays we have level switches with Profibus PA, fully digital. You can not only get the, um, the current, let's say, which tells you more or less the value after scaling, but this tells you everything. It tells you the value digitally, it tells you its serial number, if there are any problems, and so on. And this is what really leverages a lot of benefits in the process automation. So if you look at the Profibus numbers, at the moment, Profibus will become 25 years old next year, so there will be a big celebration as well. And we are approaching about 50 million installed nodes, as the Profibus organization calls it. You can say these are devices and passive network components. And looking at PA especially, this is quite a big share. It's about 9 million, and it's a well-proven solution in the process automation. So coming to the next topic, how is this then integrated in my PLC? Um, for this, I've prepared a small animation just to show you um, the differences, how the Profibus communications work. So the um, masters communicate um, over a token ring. This means the master who has the token can talk to the devices and the devices um, are polled. So they are passive, they are slaves and every master asks them um, for the information. Thereby we, uh, I show you now, this is the topology I've told you. So we have our DCS and maybe in, in, this is our first master, master class one, and we have our master class two here, maybe an engineering station or something for, the, for configuring the devices and doing special operations, let's say. So at first we have our token ring and the token gets passed from master to master. So the master who has the token can talk. And now in the next step, the token is in master one and this master class one, he does the cyclic communication. That means after every cycle, he asks the devices. Whereas the master class two, 
does the acyclic communication. So when he has the token, he can speak to a defined device and maybe dig into the configuration or and get some special data out of it, etc. So parametrization, I would say, on the right side, and on the left side, I'd rather say just getting the values up to the system to keep the plant running. So how is this integrated? This looks a bit complicated, but it isn't. You use your GSD file to integrate the Profibus device into your master class one. This means it describes the communication, beha communication behavior and the supported features. It includes the um, data that is exchanged um, cyclically and provides basic um, diagnostic data as plain text. So you can open any GSD file, you can Google one on, on the internet, and it's just a text file. You can open it with your notepad on, on Windows, for example, and there you see some vendor information and the stuff I've told you before. So basically, the GSD file um, in, in the G, to the second point, you can now say if you, for example, have a flow meter, I want temperature, I want density, and I want mass flow. And in the device, uh, in the GSD, there is there is stated where those values are, in which module, in which slot, so that your um, PLC can get the cyclic data. And if there is a fault, so this is what I've shown here, the device may raise a diagnosis bit. And all those diagnosis bits are here, well, let's say um, in clear text. So it, it means error 27 means electronic temperature too high, for example. We come later on diagnostics. And the other master I've showed you was the acyclic master. So for this, you need a DTM or an EDD file these are basically both the same. The EDD file is used for typically Siemens PDM and the DTM device type manager for the others. So with this software component, you can access specific data of the field device via the user interface. You can do, as I told you, parametrization, diagnostics, maintenance, and you can integrate the device in your plant asset management. This is now an example here, it's a bit small. You see uh, the program here is, for example, from Andrews and Hauser, it's field care, and you open your device there, and you go on the device with acyclic data exchange, and then you can dig very deep into the configuration. Here, for example, the device tells you maintenance is required. So you can do predictive maintenance, maybe it's a, it's a flow meter, and your tube is starting, starting to corrode. So by the time you can say, okay, maybe in two weeks, I will have to go down there and I can plan my maintenance. And all this can be monitored with your plant asset management system. As I told you, the EDD is quite the same used from Siemens. So now we come to the next point, which is Profibus profiles. This is always a bit confusing. I was, for example, on a fair in Germany two days ago in Bochum. And then the people asked me, yeah, what is the Profibus profile and what is the difference to the Profibus protocol and what is the difference to, um, to, the, uh, to the physical layer, so to RS-485 on the DP side or to MVP for the PA devices. And with this picture, you can really easily explain this. On the very bottom, you have your physical layer. This means, for example, Profibus PA on which we focus today uses RS-485 or typically MBP. This means Manchester bus powered. Manchester bus powers means more or less that you get the, the energy for the device over the cable and you get the data out of the device, which is a, which is a specialty of Profibus PA and is a high requirement in the process industry. Every Profibus um, profile nevertheless uses the DP protocol. This gives us a clue about um, how they, why they work together so easily. So you have your DP segment, you have your PA segment below, and they can seamlessly communicate over the DP protocol. And on top of that comes the PA profile and the other profiles, for example, Profi Drive for motion control or Profi Safe for safety application. Profi Bus PA profile 302, I would say is like a 
commitment of the different members of Profibus organization, which are more far more than 1,000 members, and I think it's over 2,000 listed devices on the Profibus website, and they commit together there to have a matching solution. So they say, okay, every PA device which follows the standard PA profiles 3.02 will behave the same. So it does not matter if it is a Siemens device, an RBB, and Samsung, Krone, Enzenhauser, and so on, Vega, I don't know uh, all of them, but I think you, you get the point. So if every vendor follows the PA profile and releases their device as a PA profile device, for example, all the Enzenhauser devices with Profibus PA follow this standard, the user is safe that all the devices behave the same way. And this is a really nice feature. So with this, we come really close to the convenience you have with 4 to 20 milliamps. Besides this, you have far more features than with 4 to 20 milliamps. So now on the right side, I have made a picture of this of the current version of the PDF file. You can download it on the Profibus website if you're interested in bits and bytes. And so what, what is the real well, use of it, it is, as I would say, easy device handling. Compared to 4 to 20 milliamps, this means you get your condensed status, so you can know if the value of the device can be trusted. You can get diagnostic messages, so not every time something fails, you have to go down to your plant, um, use the screws, open the device, look what's inside, look with your with your two cables, two, either two hard cables maybe. So you just can sit in your control room, laid back, open your PC, double click the device, and then you see, ah, right, it's a this and this error, for example. You can plan your maintenance with this. And a really cool feature, which I like very much, I will show on the next slide in a small animation. This is the automatic ident number adaptation. It sounds a bit um, complicated, but it is not. This just means, like with hard, just plug and play. This means a device fails. You go to your, it's, it's Sunday night, four o'clock. No one is at the plant who has deep IT and, and Profibus know-how. So the normal maintenance guy comes out. He takes out the old device, puts in the new device, Puts the, puts the plug in and everything is working. So this is a fantastic use of Profibus, which is quite unique, I'd say. I'll explain later again. For the um, commissioning, also fast parameter transmission is interesting. And another value of Profibus PA profile, if you follow this profile, this means the device will have every important data on a faceplate. So you have a, here a hardware nameplate, and it says you, this is a device with Profibus 3.02, this hardware revision, this is the order code if you need spare parts. So even if your device fully fails, you can get all the data, which is, as I have to say, not typical. So um, with this, this is also standardized over different vendors. So now I think you are all interested in the easy device exchange. As you know, Every device has a unique number, a code, let's say, for example, 151C. And the GSD file of this device is stored in the PLC, so for example, in your Siemens S7400. This means um, the device and the PLC can communicate. So now we have a bit of a problem. Because our device was very successful, it ran for 20 years. And the master asks for the device, hey, device, I need your value. But the device has failed. So now your maintenance guy goes to your to your store or, or the calls, calls the company which provided the device, and they tell him, oh, no, this is a very old device. We don't have it anymore. Out of stock. With Profibus PA, at the night, at 3 o'clock, this is no problem. Just plug in the successor device. This means on the Profibus page of this device on the internet, or for example, on the page of the vendor, you will see this device also supports the old functions. Now the master is asking, hey, guy, are you 151C? Well, this is not 151C. It's actually 1553. But 
it can also be 151C because it has this automatic ident number um, identification. So now it switches its ID number back to 151C. These are the supported ident numbers you find on the web page. And it tells them, yes, I'm 151C. So the communication can go on. And maybe until the next time an engineering guy is there and the process has to be stopped on a regular basis, the driver can be exchanged as well in the GSD to have the full functionality, which maybe is added when changing from one generation to the next. So with this automatic overtaking of roles, I think Profibus user organization has fixed a very customer pain. And I have seen it in several plans, for example, from BASF, here in Germany or from DuPont in the Netherlands, that they gain a huge advantage out of this, a huge customer use. Another thing which I told you before is the fast parameter up and download for fast commissioning. This means with, the, with every device with which to supports profile 3.02, you can have a very fast up and download of the device's uh, parameter. So, Imagine, for example, you have a huge plant, you have 1,000 Profibus devices. This will take some time to write the parameterization down from your computer to the device. With 302, this is up to 10 times faster, so your commissioning and maintenance and device exchange is accelerated. You don't lose time anymore. This is also a nice feature, I'd say. Next one is the diagnostics with Profile 302. So how was it before? We have different vendors here on the downside, maybe, and every device, these are the colors, has its diagnosis. So um, this is not unified. So all the diagnoses are set to the Profibus, to your control system or to your maintenance guys, and they see this colorful cloud, and they don't know what is priority, what do I have to do first, what is this, maybe this is just maintenance required, and this is a bad fault. So with Profibus, Profile 3.02 and the NA107, this is clustered. So maybe you have seen the webinar of my colleague Ricard on uh, Wednesday evening, and there he already spoke about the Namur NA107. So Namur is a user organization, more or less, of all the chemical companies who um, have come together to get some leverage, to get some pressure on the um, foundations of different field buses. And we, as the Profibus user organization, have implemented this standard. This means now your, maybe your operator just gets those symbols, and then he can call the maintenance guys and tell them, hey, this device tells me maintenance required. Maybe it's a valve, and the valve is starting to get slower and slower, but it's still working, but maybe in, in one or two weeks it will fail. So now the maintenance guys can do predictive maintenance, this means they go there and they do schedule everything and they do not have to stop the process immediately. Also quite a benefit from Profibus. So with the condensed status, as I told you, the operators get a overview. And nevertheless, as on the slide before, the detailed diagnosis is still available. Just click it and you find, find out more. For this, I have now to sum up a small um, presentation of how it could look in reality. So here we see our plant. Maybe this is the operator view in his um, human machine interface, so on his, on his PC. And this is, for example, a blending process in a whiskey distillery, or I don't know. You have different tanks, you have different drives, you have valves, you have different probes. Here is a pH probe, and here you have flow, temperature, and I don't know. So with Profibus PA, this gets really cool intelligence, I would say. So here in my example, we get an alarm. So Profibus submits, hey, this value cannot be trusted of the pH probe. Maybe the pH probe just broke or um, something happened. But no one has to go down there yet because you can click it and then you see all right i have the overview of all the of all the faults of the device so i see uh -huh, temperature failure remedy one check wiring or change the class electrode 
more detailed information as I told you here. Then we can dig in even deeper and we see the history of the device. So we see, ah, okay, where this, was this failure there before? Uh -huh, at 7.46 we have this failure, but we had it also a half hour earlier and the day before earlier. So this cannot be a glass probe which is broken because then the failure would be permanent. So now we think, okay, it's maybe a wiring issue and we can send our engineering guys or our maintenance guys down to the plant and tell them, okay, guys, this is most probably a cable error. So you can have very good diagnosis from your PC, don't have to go to the device, and your maintenance guys can um, work more efficiently. This saves a lot of money. So to sum up what I have told you now, the Profibus profile for actuators and sensors is available for all important areas in the process industry. Just ask your preferred vendor, I'd say, for PA302 devices. And with this, you can get a lot of valuable features, especially for the process industry, because they are the target group of this. Easy device handling, easy diagnostics, more speed, and also what is also available, but it's not a, well, it's not content of this webinar, is ProfiSafe for process automation, which also is for very security, let's say, uh, vulnerable um, critical points of your process. There you can also get a lot of safety. And I have good news for you. Of course, Profibus is a, a very proven and more or less old technology, but this does not mean that, that we do not do anything anymore, because at the moment, the Profibus user organization is working on a successor of the profile version 3.02. So there we will, we have a high simplicity now, but we will get some more advantages with this. So here's a small outlook on the new PA profile, maybe. So. What we want to have there, we want to have a more aligned behavior of the devices, so they will have a better reset function management. We will have a basis GSD file, so you have one driver for every PA device to get at least your value up, to get the basic, basic functionality. This is also a Namur requirement for so-called device-neutral engineering. Parametrization and communication will be separated, so we will get ready for Profinet. We will um, transfer the um, measurement unit so that you know if it's um, in kilograms or in grams, for example, or if it's in uh, degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. There will be security manager uh, mechanisms. There will be default parameters. And of course, which is for Profibus, very important is investment protection. So also the new PA profile, as well as the one we have now, are compatible with the old ones. This is a basic requirement of every customer. They have their plans which long, run for a long time. So the PA organization, the Profibus organization, also minds, keeps this in mind. So now to sum up, I also have some visions for you. So to the midterm future scene, we expect that Profibus DP will on the long term be replaced by Profinet. This means new greenfield projects may be starting 2016, 2015. It's depending on the branch, I would say. So as you see here, I think uh, the, the important message is that Profinet will someday um, re, um, be there instead of Profibus DP. But don't be afraid because Profibus PA will not die. Profibus PA is very important because it has unique features, which Ethernet does not have. So with Profibus, you can power your devices over the bus. This is quite an issue at the moment with Ethernet, which has not been solved. You can use Profibus in explosion in hazardous areas. You have the FISCO concept. You can go up to um, zone zero. This is very convenient and this can also not be provided by Ethernet at the moment. 
And more, more, moreover, we also have a very elaborated system with the PA profile, which is proven in practice and in practice, and it's working. So let's say Profibus PA is an important value also for the Profibus organization, and it will take some more, well, I don't want to say decades, but a lot of time until this can also be done by Ethernet. We are far away from this. Of course, there are a lot of committees and big companies working on this, but, but until you see it in the plant, you will need some time, let's say. So I hope I was not too quick, and I am now looking forward to questions.